Hey you all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Astro Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? Now, today we'll um, be diagnosing a 2005 Volkswagen Beetle 2.0. Um, customer complaint is the check engine light is on. So we're going to diagnose that and we'll be right back. Alright guys and girls, we got the Actron. Actron's a powerful tool. All right, let's look this up. Um, all right, Billy Bob, you want to show them where the diagnostic connector is before I hook it up? All right. You know, why don't you turn the screen so you can, won't you, yeah, flip the screen like that. That's your diagnostic connector. Um, basically, when you put it in, you know, most of them be turned up, but it's facing the opposite way. You all, oh, I, should, I should let you hook it up since you was up under there. In case you all are interested in racing the team. Man, we're, we're gonna get to that later, man. Don't, don't chill now. I'm showing about the hawk. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna oh, show oh, later. Oh, oh, see, man, you, you, go, you ruined the surprise for him. We're gonna on the hawk. That's what I'm saying. But we, that's a surprise, man. We're gonna get him in a few minutes. Ah. See, if I start a real for they might, you know, run off, you know what I mean? Like, they might, they might like a street bike, but they don't know it's a drag bike, you know, you know. All right, here we go. Put the key on. Okay, vehicle diagnostics. Auto ID. Hit enter, blah, blah, blah. Communicating with the vehicle. Okay, 2005 Volkswagen New Beetle 2.0. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Collecting data, it's a four speed. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. What the heck? Well, how you, how you know it's four speed? Because it has a his and her. Man, move your knee. God dang it, man. It has a his and her over there, so how you know it's a four? What you mean, his and her? His and her, man. The, the shift, where you can shift manually yourself like a five speed car, deposit it a nigga. Well, it's either going to be six speed. Or the four speed. So how you know it's a four? I'm asking you. How? How? Tell me. Which one is it? Man, it's a four speed, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a four speed. Okay. Communicating with the vehicle. Uh, detecting. It's detecting the modules that's in the car right now. It's detected the engine. 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 <laughs> 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 because the battery be is one. All right, please turn key off. Or, yeah, man, come on, just go, go, go. That is nice. That is nice. Yeah, they see they're looking at the hook though. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah, look at that bike. Look at it. <laughs> Man, they looking at the teddy bears on the front of the truck. They, they, they ain't care the about truck. your raggedy Chevy. Man, they were looking, they were, they, they, you know, the truck might have surprised them too, them big wheels on that little bit of truck, but they were looking at the bike. They said, oh, this is the hawk. Yeah, finally, man, it changed. Detected module, EPP, airbag, ABS. You no, know, guys, we ain't gonna let here, we ain't gonna sit here and let you transfer a case. When it gets ready, we'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are on the SRS, the airbag. We see there's a code, the ABS, there's a code, the ECM, there's three codes. Now, what's weird about this is when the car was running, the check engine light uh, was not on. The battery was really weak, and we did have to jump the vehicle. But uh, anyway, okay, let's hit enter. Here we go, we got a cooling system performance, no indication on display. That's an intermittent problem here. So it's not like a hard code, but um, that's definitely will cause that check engine light to come on. Uh, no DT, that's, isn't it the same one? I think it was the same one. We gotta find out what that one is right there. No DT definition found. Uh, no DT definition found. Uh, supply battery voltage. We know it had a weak battery. That's a stored code, but that's not going to trigger the check engine light. 
And for the ABS sensor, we had a varying wheel speed impulse, wheel speed impulse. All right, I'm not worrying about that also. Our main concern right here is the intermittent, and that's the cooling system performance. Now, on a, a which is surprising on OBD2, the code is, I think, a PO128. Is it Billy Bob? 128, I think. One, I think a 128. Something around there. System performance malfunction. Yeah. And a lot of you guys want to know what that, what that means. Well, as you know, you hang around with Astro. We will teach you what it means, and we'll, we we will use layman's term. We ain't gonna sit here and try to rip you off and rip people off and thinking they're hooking up to diagnostic equipment and diagnose the problem. I'm gonna show you exactly what that means, and I'm gonna show you possibilities on what can cause that. So we're gonna get out of here. And uh, we're going to explain that. We'll be right back. All right, guys, girls, check this out. Cooling system malfunction. Here, here we are. We got a little my, my little chalkboard here, my little drawing board. Yeah, cool, that works. All right, here's the starting point, and here's the finishing point. When you start your car up from this point on, let's say your coolant is about... 65 degrees Fahrenheit right there now time-wise here is the four minute mark once you start your car up the computer starts a timer on the car from here to here the temperature of your coolant should be a certain a certain temperature whatever set inside your computer let's say it's uh, let's say it's 210 degrees so your coolant is 65 degrees. You start your car up. After four minutes, the computer checks your temperature again. It should be 10 degree, 210 degrees. If it's not, if it's anything lower than that, that check engine light will come on. Uh, coolant system malfunction. Did I explain that pretty good, Billy Bob? Is that, that pretty good, pretty everything, much. right? Pretty huh? much. Pretty much. Is, is that good? I want to yeah. make sure it's all right now. Yeah. All right, so, <clears throat> now what can cause the temperature of your antifreeze not to reach 210 in four minutes. Give me an idea. You gotta be low. Either it's, that's one. It could be low. Give me another one. You have a bad thermostat. That's number two. Thermostat. Now we're gonna think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Billy Bob a second. God, you know, he's, he's a super tech in training. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see, get that mind going. You have and, a, uh... And, and whoa, but before he answers, guys, girls, you give me some answers also. Well, shoot, maybe I need to leave some room for them to answer then. Well, they, they, they can answer. They, they, they thinking about it. Pause the video, okay, tell you what, before Billy Bob goes on, before I go on, pause the video and write down what you think would cause this temperature on this cooling system, besides the low, low coolant, Besides the thermostat, what can cause this temperature not to reach 210 within four minutes from startup? All right, so you pause the video. Not you. You ain't going to pause it. Why is he going to pause the video? <laughs> All right. Now, hope you pause the video. We're back. All right, Billy Bob. Give me something else. Now, now I forgot what you asked, though. What did you, what did you ask? I what do you mean, what did I ask? Okay, what could cause? All right, look at it. You start the car up. Uh -huh. The coolant, the antifreeze is 65 degrees. Mm -hmm. In four minutes, that coolant should be 210. Yep. What can stop it from reaching that 210 degrees within that four minute period by the time it hit four minutes? And just like you said, you gave two a low coolant, I mean, you a could, thermostat. You could have a, 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 a hose with a leak. No. That, 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 yes, you can. Then that goes on the low anti low antifreeze. Okay. Well. Okay. You can have a bad sensor. If you, um, temperature sensor. It can say that the car is at one temperature. Like that. And it's not. Like that. Sensor is another problem. Another issue that can do. Now, the way to verify that sensor is hooking up your scan tool. It ain't got to be no high end diagnostic scan tool, guys. You just get regular Atron like we got. Go into data stream and read what that temperature reads as that car is warming up. All right, it could be that. 
Now what happens on the cooling sensor, what happens is, especially dirty dirt, when people don't change their antifreeze or whatever the thermos is, and they get a lot of rust in the system, on the tip of a sensor, the antifreeze goes around and, and it, builds up the, uh, it builds up the temperature on that. So all that gunk gets built up on that, so it would not allow that temperature, that sensor to read what it's supposed to be. All right, that's another thing. What else? I'm gonna leave him alone. That's it. I'm gonna let him think about it. Here's another thing, guys, that you don't know. Now, antifreeze is supposed to be mixed 50-50. Water, water, or you get 50-50. If you put in straight concentrated antifreeze, it's gonna take a long time for that thing to get hot. Because you're using straight antifreeze. When you mix it with the 50-50, with the water and the antifreeze, it's gonna build that temperature up quicker. So definitely stay with it. That's why I say always mix the anti antifreeze will be 50-50, blend it, all right? So you definitely wanna make sure of that. Uh, if we thought about it, I mean, if you think about it, guys, pretty much just use your mind. Shops just are going through the same thing. And actually, a shop wouldn't even go through, like Billy Bob said that about the, the sensor, and I'm about the uh, full strength antifreeze. Shops don't even realize that. See, and, and then also, oh, oh, yo, yo, you got to speak a little louder because yo, oh, remember yeah, the mic, the mic, yeah. Here. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, the water pump well, actually caused it too because if, if the water pump ain't able to circulate, it's gonna throw their reading off as well. No, yeah, no, no, you, you, you want to know why? You want to know why? Tell me why. Because if the thermostat, if the, if the water pump, check this out, guys. Now, and it's good thinking. Bill Bow has some good thinking, and I like that he's thinking along the lines. But see, now, he, now I got to push his mind to another, to take his mind to another level. Now, guys, you got to use a little common sense on this. If the thermos, if the water pump is not circulating, that water, that antifreeze is going to stay right inside the block, yeah. and the, the cooling sensor is right there in the block. So that means it's going to heat up real quick. It ain't yeah. circulating. But but what? If, if it, okay. But what? What I'm saying is if. The water pump ain't what? working. Of course, it's, it's, it's going to get hot. If the water's going to get hot. Then quick. It's, it's going to get hot quick. It's going to cause it to have a, a messed up reading. No. But see, you, you're thinking of the opposite way. If the if the water pump is not working, the mm -hmm. antifreeze is not flowing. That means that temperature is going to skyrocket quick. Because the car going to start to overheat. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we ain't worrying about that. The thing is, what would keep it from reaching that? Oh, okay, oh, oh, see, see, yeah, yeah, see, right. okay, see, see, there you go, see, oh, see, you got me thinking too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, see, now we're talking. All right, so now what we got to do is uh, sit here, we'll, now the first thing we're going to do, you talk to the customer and you go over your mind. When was the last time you changed the thermostat? Check your antifreeze. Those things are first. If, you're, if your thermostat hasn't been changed in a while, you definitely going to be needing a thermostat, okay? It's very, very rare that we come across a system where we got a bad cooling sensor or something and the first thing okay check it out we go over here here's our bottle over here so we just open this up the first thing you do is check the condition of the antifreeze and if you could look inside all right we got antifreeze in it that's good now how do you know whether the antifreeze is good or not now what you're gonna do is use a tester. Let me get a tester and we'll be right back. All right, here we go. We got here an antifreeze hydrometer. Now after I put some antifreeze in here, it's gonna tell me at what point this antifreeze is gonna freeze at. If this thing was straight antifreeze, this thing ain't gonna pretty much skyrocket up here to negative 50 or 60 below zero before it freezes. That's why I know, that's how I'm gonna know that there's more antifreeze than water in here. It's not a complete mixture. All right, so let's go in here, put that in there. Oh, 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 man, we gotta get Let's uh, get this. Yeah, hold on, press it. All right. Negative 34. Now, now, that little reading right there tells me is. Man, that's close. Mm -hmm. that, 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 no, I that's 50. Yeah, that, that's, that's 50. That's <laughs> huh? No, man. That's, that's straight antifreeze. That's water. That's man. straight antifreeze. Anti <laughs> Billy Bob, if it was straight water, it'd be down to zero. This is the oh, freezing point. Get it right, get yeah, yeah, get it right, get it right, get it right. Come on, come on, come on, get it right. Ain't got all day. Come on, get it right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay right. So there you go. Um, so that means it's taking yeah, a it, long it, it, time it. for it to heat up. Yep. So we know we're lowering that. 
So somebody been putting some uh, straight antifreeze in this because we should be about negative 34. Now, if you negative 50, you're going to, I mean, if you live in Alaska or something, you probably have to run straight. I'm not even sure. I don't live in Alaska, so I don't know. But, um, let me, now, you know, now, see, I am a little bit above line. So let me, uh, drain a little bit out here. This is just in case. Yeah, it's about one thirty, negative thirty four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, we're gonna say it's good, guys. Definitely, it's good. I mean, our antifreeze in here has a good mixture of water and antifreeze, which is definitely what we want. And another thing is, our system is clean. It ain't a lot of rusty in there, so I know pretty much our thermostat, it, our um, sensor, is good. All right? There ain't gonna be that much gunk built up on or anything. So. You know, this, it's just like a process of elimination, guys and girls. So we know. Right now, I'm gonna go and we're gonna talk to the customer. We're gonna see when's the last time they had a thermostat change. More than likely, it's gonna be, they're gonna say, "Thermostat? What's a thermostat?" <laughs> 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 so, but okay, we're gonna check that out. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, girls. There you have it. Hey, diagnosing that uh, code for the uh, coolant system malfunction. Usually, it's a PO128, 2005 Volkswagen Beetle. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video because we like to separate our videos so it don't come confuse people but well, we're going to be actually changing this thermostat all right this is timmy and billy bob from master auto repairs wait 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 a minute. forgot something <laughs> any kind of questions or comments be sure to put them in the comment section below or you can email me at tim at astralautorepairs.com this is tim and billy bob from astral auto repairs if we can't repair it nobody can <laughs> take out easy <laughs>